These are the possibly false truths we convince ourselves to believe in regards to our food. An apple a day keeps the doctor away, and you're wondering, is that really true? Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 food myths. At the end of the day, if we compare them side by side, there are pros and cons for each. For this list, we're focusing on popular adages about food or common diet tips, some of which have merit, some of which don't, and some of which do, but not for the reasons you'd think then I would probably consider limiting or avoiding gum until the child gets a little bit older. But as always, be sure to consult a medical professional when it comes to your health. Stay lean and stay strong. Number 10, microwaving food destroys nutrients, myth. So we're talking really about... We begin our list with the big bad microwave. Any new technology attracts its share of critics, and the microwave was no different. Why don't you build something like he does, instead of all your empty deals, it's just like your f***ing science oven. You know, I read that it takes all of the nutrition out of our food. It's empty, just like your deals. It's long been suggested that cooking food this way can rob it of its healthy properties, but for the most part, that's just not true. It's actually the cook time and heat level that is most likely to destroy nutrients. And since a microwave takes less time than most conventional cooking methods, in many cases, it might actually help retain more of the healthiness. And cook for three to four minutes until the salmon is flaky. Pro tip, try steaming vegetables in a sealed microwave safe dish with a small amount of water for delicious and nutritious veggies. It's also very important to choose glass cookware or microwave safe cookware that doesn't Oops. emit or leach different plastic compounds, Oops. which can be toxic. Number nine, pop rocks plus soda equals kaboom, myth. Thirsty? Oh, what's wrong? Something you might have heard about mixing uh, pop rocks and soda? Well, supposedly, your stomach and your intestines, everything first. Coca-Cola hit the market in 1886. Pop Rocks hit the market in 1975. Rumors claiming that ingesting these junky products at the same time would cause your stomach to explode due to excessive carbon dioxide from the combo of the fizzy candy and the carbonated drink weren't far behind. <laughs> well, I'm a little afraid, I can't even say well, it. Well, let me see, let's all see. Okay. Oh crap. Everyone heard this urban legend when they were growing up, and many of us may have actually believed it. The people of Seattle believed it so much, the US Food and Drug Administration had to set up a hotline to calm them down. All right, here we go. But the truth is, the worst thing it could likely do to you is cause a nice, satisfying belch. <coughs> I did it. Number eight, eggs are bad for your heart. Myth. This food factoid has been debated for years. But here's what we know. Eggs contain cholesterol, and too much cholesterol can lead to health problems like heart disease. So how is this a myth? Well, contrary to what you might have been told, eggs are one of the healthiest foods you can consume, as they're full of vitamins, minerals, and protein. If you're healthy and don't have a history of heart problems, you can likely eat an egg a day without it adversely affecting your cholesterol levels, as your body will offset it by producing less cholesterol itself. So will that be scrambled or sunny side up? There was a widely spread study uh, that eggs were not good for you. And this just doesn't simply make any sense. Number seven, red wine is good for your heart, fact. Nope, I don't care what the scientists say, I'm just gonna keep on drinking. All you wine drinkers out there, prepare to rejoice. Scientists have been studying the connection between wine consumption and heart health for years. After looking at the French diet and noticing relatively low rates of heart disease, even though their traditional foods are fatty. And if they wanna drink Merlot, we're drinking Merlot. No, if anybody orders Merlot, I'm leaving. I am not drinking any Low. But it's true, red wine features heart-healthy properties that can possibly protect against heart attacks or strokes, among other things. However, like most things when it comes to your diet, moderation is key. No, 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 I'm driving. About two glasses a day for men and one for women is the optimum amount to drink for your health. We'll drink to that. Rain, rain. Number 
six, a gluten-free diet is better for anyone, myth. Gluten's a vague term. It's, it's, it's something that's used to categorize things that are bad. You know, calories, that's a gluten. Gluten is a rather new buzzword in the mainstream, but boy, has it gained steam fast. Gluten intolerance is described as the fastest growing food intolerance category, selling over 10.5 billion in the US in 2013 and only growing since then. And while those suffering from celiac disease are unable to digest gluten, only about 1% of the population suffers from it and therefore should follow a gluten-free diet. And your body responds in a lot of ways to it. Stomach pains, swollen lymph nodes, skin rashes, a whole host of things that will progressively get worse as you keep having gluten in your diet. Doctors recommend that anyone without this condition can and should include whole grains in their balanced diet for help with digestion, lower blood pressure and cholesterol, maintaining a healthy body weight and more. So why is it so bad? Well, it's not. In fact, it's neither detrimental or essential for your health. And there's very little evidence to suggest that cutting it out is the healthier choice for the average person. Pass the whole wheat toast, please. Stop. Each bite is better than the previous bite. Gluten! Number five, it takes seven years to digest swallowed gum. Myth. Name something you put in your mouth but don't swallow. Amanda. Gum? We've all been there. One minute you're chewing some gum, the next something startles you and you swallow it. Better hope your mom's not around to lecture you about how swallowed gum will not be digested by your system for seven years and will just fester in your gut until it's finally excreted. Okay, gross and patently untrue. While gum has been described as indigestible, that doesn't mean it stays in your stomach. It just means that when you do pass the gum through your system, in the regular amount of time, it'll be in pretty much the same shape as when you swallowed it. <laughs> you know what? I, I got gum on my seat. Gum. But we don't suggest checking it out to be sure. Bubble gum, bubble gum. I got the icky, sticky, ooey, gooey bubble gum. Number four, eating turkey makes you sleepy. Myth. Oh, Monica, that was the best Thanksgiving dinner ever. It was so good. I think you killed us. We were surprised about this one too, considering how lethargic we are after Thanksgiving dinner every year. So why do you feel tired after you stuff your face with turkey? A common assertion blames tryptophan, an amino acid found in many meats that's connected to the sleepy time hormone melatonin. But the holiday bird actually contains less tryptophan than a food like cheddar cheese, for example. So experts point to other culprits when it comes to after-meal exhaustion. It's probably the combo of carbs and booze that cause you to snooze. Whatever, bring it on. Jelly, those are my maternity pants. No, no, these are my Thanksgiving pants. <laughs> Number three, oysters are an aphrodisiac myth. Have you ever had oysters? <laughs> Did you know oysters are an aphrodisiac? Well, it's probably a myth anyway. The oyster has long been considered a vital food for love, partly because of its vague resemblance to female sex organs and partly because the legendary lover Casanova was said to eat 50 of them each morning. <laughs> But there have been many studies over the years, none of which has proven the oyster's role as a definitive aphrodisiac. <laughs> what they have found, however, is that oysters are so rich with zinc and amino acids that they may increase the sex drive. Maybe there's something to this one after all. But no matter how you eat them, they're sure to enhance the romance of your Valentine's Day evening. Number two, acne is caused by chocolate, greasy foods, etc. Myth. People think that I eat too many chocolate bars or that I don't wash my face. Call them pimples, call them zits, but whatever you call them, they're an unfortunate part of life. And they often crop up at the worst possible time. My chocolate! Ah! My beautiful chocolate! Now, the uninformed might blame things like chocolate or greasy foods for their facial blemishes, while others might cite poor hygiene. But they'd all be wrong. Acne's caused by bacteria, excess oil, or clogged pores. And there's not a ton you can do about it. Chocolate rain. 
A baby born will die before the sin chocolate rain. Stress and hormones may trigger a breakout, as can some medications. And there are even some studies that suggest diet can be an aggravating factor. But all in all, zits are a rite of passage we all must deal with. I'm a zit. Get it? Before we unveil our top pick, here are some honorable mentions. Today, there are over 900 published studies revealing the detrimental effects of aspartame. Migraines are the most reported aspartame reaction. Well, that one's close. A lot of these looking like they're coming extremely close to making contact. Even though artificial sweeteners don't raise your blood sugar, they may put you at greater risk for diabetes. Calories consumed after, say, 10 p.m. won't make you gain weight any faster than calories consumed at 6 p.m. Research shows that what matters is how many calories you eat and not the time that you eat them. The bottom line is to be aware of what you're eating. Margarine can vary so drastically that looking at the label to understand what is or isn't in it will help you make informed decisions. Number one, organic food is always healthier, myth. Organic food is grown without synthetic pesticides, fertilizers, antibiotics, or hormones. Today, it accounts for more than $31 billion in sales a year in the United States. Many people think the organic label gives food some supernatural nutritional value, but it actually refers to the way the farmers grow or raise their products. Is that USDA organic or Oregon organic or Portland organic? It's just all across the board organic. In many cases, organic farming might encourage soil and water conservation while decreasing pollution. It's also more likely to be free of preservatives and synthetic flavors. Now I'm on the inside, looking at my list. Organic chicken kale salad and a lemon twist. However, thus far, test results have gone back and forth on whether or not organic food is healthier. If you want to support small farmers and sustainable development, then by all means look for an organic certification. However, an apple is an apple no matter how it's grown. So as long as you're eating a healthy, balanced diet, you should be fine. His name was Colin. Here are his papers, okay? That's great. He, he looks like a happy little yeah. guy who runs around. A lot of friends, other chickens as friends. Putting his little wing around another one and kind of like you know, palling around. I don't know that I can speak to that level of uh, intimate knowledge about him. Do you agree with our list? Mm. <laughs> that is so good. What's your favorite food myth? For more enticing top 10s published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. <laughs> 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 <laughs>